I'm back. Yeah. It's the end of the month. This is becoming a normal thing. I'm liking it. I hope you guys are liking it too. Um, happy to be here. Happy to be a part of this church. And um, love you guys. I'm going to pray real quick because I need it. And I think we all need it. So, dear Holy Father, we just thank you again. I'm back with um, prayer. But I just thank you, Father, that um, you will just speak through me. Lord, that you will just open up our hearts. That um, we can be receptive of what is today. Lord, this is a pretty... Um, intense message, and it's um, it's an important one, but I just pray, God, that we will have ears opened and hearts opened to hear this and receive this and to take away something from this, and, and this is all for you, God. This is all because we love you, and I just pray, God, that you would just be here with me up here and be with us in this building right now, Lord, and we just thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as I said, this is, this is a message that um, I've been praying about all month. Like, at the beginning of April, it, like, came to me, and I've been really, like, praying about it and adding things to it. So, um, I'm calling it, Plant the Seed, Be the Seed. So, um, it's, I kind of want to go for, like, a Mr. Miyagi type thing, like, wax on, wax off, like, something that's, like, kind of, like, cool sounding. So, that, that's my goal for that. Um, so... Plant the seed, be the seed. Um, I brought my uh, friend Groot here um, because it's the first plant I've ever received. <laughs> I've never got, I've never been into like planting or like gardening or anything. And I think it's kind of fitting since it's April and it's like springtime. Well, kind of, you know, because it's been like snowing and it's a winter that seems like it never ends. But um, typically, this is the time for planting and gardening and farming and all that. And um, But I just received my first plant for Christmas. And I just, uh, probably the beginning of the month, I, I um, planted all the seeds in here. But um, this is Groot. I don't know if any of you have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's from that. And um, I just saw Infinity War this weekend with my best friend Sam. <laughs> That he's in the back. He's really cool. If you ever get a chance to talk to him, like, do it. Just, he's really cool. But, um, so, how many of you have seen this Infinity War? You in the back? How many of you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about? <laughs> Most of you, okay. It's a really great movie. I, I'm endorsing it, and, um, there are also our video sponsor of the day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe Marvel will eventually start sponsoring us, you know, if I just keep endorsing them. <laughs> Go see their movie. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. <laughs> but um, at the beginning of the month, I got this, and there was kind of a process of planning this. This is grass, you know, and um, in the movie, Groot is like a big talking tree, to put it plainly. It sounds kind of silly, I know, but he's really cool. But um, they... Um, so in, in the course of this plant, I got um, like this little soil tablet that you had to soak in water. And I had all these seeds that I had to soak for 10 hours in water. So I um, put the dirt in there and then um, I put, I, I had these bigger seeds and I had these littler seeds. So the little ones were the grass and the big ones were like this vine thing that you're seeing here. And um, so I had to plant the bigger seed inside and then I put the smaller seeds on top, and I just waited. And a couple of days go by, and it's like sprouting. It's I've, I've trimmed this thing at least four times. It like went crazy. But um, I it's like it's crazy how when you plant something, it grows. And and I just want to go based off that topic of what we plant is what we get, you know. And um, I have I, I would like for you guys to open your Bibles to Mark, chapter. 11, verse, starting with verse 12. Um, this is a very small, small portion of like story within a, a bigger story. So there's, it's really easy to overlook this passage. I, I have a lot because it's between two really big things. Um, Jesus coming into Jerusalem like Palm Sunday and then, then this portion of scripture that I'm reading. And then after that, um, comes like Jesus clears the temple where he like makes the whip and like casts everyone out. So it's really easy because like there's two really big events that like we always hear about and then there's this like little piece that like just gets kind of brushed over. It like gets lost within this and um, God brought this to my attention while I was you know preparing for this and Jesus it's called Jesus curses the fig tree. 
So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read it. Um, I'm gonna do my best anyway. Um, the next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs, but there were only leaves because there was it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard, heard him say it. So, Jesus, you know, what we see here is Jesus, you know, is on his way to Bethany, or from Bethany, and um, he sees a fig tree far off, in full bloom, and he's like, I'm going to go over there, because he's really hungry, and he goes and he tries to find figs, but there isn't any, so he curses it. And um, Mark is the account of Peter, so Mark is writing it down for Peter's, but Peter makes an effort to say that it wasn't in season. But the, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? That's my question. That was my question when I read this. And, you know, I already stated that it was already too, it was too early in the season for fruit. Um, but also, two other main points in this that I'm noticing are Jesus was very hungry, and he um, and the tree's leaves were in full bloom. So back to my question, why did Jesus curse this fig tree? You know, there's a lot of takeaways in the account of, I think, Luke, or Matthew. Matthew says that after this, he actually um, says that, he talks about faith. And like, if you have faith, you can tell the mountains to go into the sea, and it will. And, you know, he's talking about faith, but... Peter doesn't talk about any of that. He just plainly says the story. So I feel like there's more to it. And as I was thinking about this, it's just, was Jesus just really hangry? You know, was he like really hungry? And he's just like, you know what? You're not going to feed me. I'm cursing you. You're dying. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm starving and you disappointed me. And like, that might be a part of it, you know, because when I'm hungry, I get pretty angry too. I wish I could just, you know, <laughs> I, I get anything. But, you know, Jesus is God. You know, he, and I'm thinking, like, he is God. He could have made figs just grow, right? I mean, if you think about it, like, he could turn rocks into bread if he wanted to. He could walk on water. Like, couldn't he just make the figs grow on the tree instead of cursing it? So I'm thinking, like, okay, what, what is the takeaway? Like, I'm annotating this, and I'm like, what is the takeaway from this? Like, what can I learn from this? And, um... What I take from this is Jesus was hungry. He sees a tree in full bloom. He walks up to it, and he sees no fruit. And you're probably asking, why, why you know, like, what, how does this apply to me? Like, what can I take away from this? And I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, so, as Christians, you know, we can have fruitful seasons, and we can have non-fruitful seasons. And, um, but I find in myself included, like I'm not standing up here saying that I have this all figured out, like this is very relevant to me right now, and this is very much what God is showing me right now and dealing with me, and I've learned that if I preach out of my weakness, I never run out of material. So, um, this is coming from a place of weakness. I don't want you to think that I have this like mastered and I'm better than you, and there, there's no way, I'm not, promise you. So, anyway, we can be fruitless fig trees. And we can deceive everyone with our leaves and how beautiful we are and how put to, well put together we are. We can put on our fancy clothes and we can put on a smile. We can seem like everything's all right, but inside we're just, you know, we're dead inside. You know, we're not pr producing any fruit. We're struggling. And, um, and like when hungry people come to us, they can't get anything from us because we have nothing to offer them. I mean, I, I, know, I don't know if that relates to you. I don't know if that means anything to you, but just think about it. How many Christians are walking around and they're fruitless fig trees, you know? Right? We, we put on this lovely face and we put on this facade of neatness, but we're just, we're fruitless. We have, we have nothing planted. We have nothing deeply rooted. And like, like the big seed, that this vine, I had to plant that deep in the soil. The grass, I just planted on top, you know, and I feel like our problems are planted on top of the soil, and like, we need to plant Jesus deep within. He's the vine, you know, and, and, um, and whenever you, like, deal with problems, it's like, you don't want 
I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. But, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Anyway, so, I think it's really cool that in Genesis, that God made us literally from dirt. Think about that. Like, he made us from the soil of the dirt. And planting is a very common theme in the Bible. And I think a lot of us get spiritual seeds put in us. Um, seeds of, like, good seeds and bad seeds, you know? And we're literally soil. You know, we're literally the dirt of the earth that God created and breathed life into. And, and we're very um, able to receive things. And I'm, I want to talk to you guys today about what seeds are being planted and what seeds are we nurturing and what seeds aren't we nurturing. Does that make sense? So um, in Luke... 6.43-45, through 45, you don't have to turn there, I'll just read it to you. It says, a tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from a treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from a treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. That's a powerful statement there. So, Whenever you plant something, sometimes we don't realize what's getting planted in us. We don't realize it until you see the fruit of it. Um, being in a relationship, I, this is a, a newish thing, you know, and I've noticed that whenever you're under pressure and there's like a wedding date planning and then, you know, you're, you know, there, there's, these are intense times and they're good times, but you start seeing, like whenever you put like an olive under pressure, you get olive oil, right? And like whenever you put pressure on something, you see what's inside of it. And through this process, you know, and even just like in my jobs, in my past, like what I've had stressful jobs and sometimes we, when we're under pressure, that's what you see, that whatever comes out of you is that's the fruit. And sometimes I don't like the fruit that comes out of me. You know, there's sometimes that anger comes out and insecurity and, um, you know, all these things. And, and it's like these were planted in me a long time ago. And I've nurtured them, and I've let them grow inside of me, and I, sometimes I didn't even know they were there. I'm like, whoa, where'd this come from? I didn't even realize it was in there until I saw the fruit. I'm like, wow, I didn't know I planted an orange tree. I didn't know I planted an anger tree. I didn't know I planted an insecurity tree, you know? Right? It's like you, you don't know and then until you see the fruit. So my next question is, are you producing fruit? And what kind of fruit are you producing? You know? And... Okay, and like, why are you producing those fruits? Like, think about it. And I know this is a hard, like, it's, it's hard, and it's like, I want you guys to understand this, and I, I'm trying to understand this myself. We can't nurture bad seeds if we see it. And, and you can't just mow it over either. Like, okay, I have insecurity, so I'm just going to, like, push it down, or I'm just going to, like, do this and ignore it, and, and just, like, kind of take care of it surface level, because, oh, yeah, I cut this grass, but it's going to grow back. If I don't want this grass to grow back, I have to pull it out from the root. But if Jesus isn't, if he's surface level, if Jesus is surface level, he's not deep within the soil, that's why I wanted to save it for this part, and I was getting too ahead of myself. But if Jesus isn't planted deep within, and he's only surface level, he's going to be the first thing to go when you're derooting. Whenever problems come, if your problems are deeper rooted than your Jesus, than your God, then you're going to have a lot of problems, and you're not going to be producing much good fruit. Amen. Amen? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and I'm seeing this in myself. I'm not saying this like, you need to do this. Like, I need to do this. Like, I'm seeing a lot of bad fruit. I'm seeing good fruit, too. Like, I have good fruit, but, like, I'm seeing a lot of bad fruit coming from myself. And I don't like it, you know? And I want to do something about it. Um, I recently had a revelation with God, because... Here, let me just start off by saying some, some bad seeds. These are common ones. I'm not good enough. I am a burden. Um, I'm ugly. I'm stupid. Um, I'm better than you, or I'm worse than you, or I'm afraid. These things are common things that are planted inside of us. And we nurture them, we, we take care of them. It's like, yeah, I'm so afraid, or I'm so insecure, and I have this, and I have this problem. And, and you just, 
by the time like you water it and you you feed it and it grows and you're producing all this fruit then it's like how did it get here but it's like i've been taking care of it this whole entire time <laughs> you know instead of applying good seed to it and derooting that and saying where is this coming from what is the root of this issue and um as I was saying, like in this relationship with Mackenzie, I found that I have this common theme that I'm not good enough. That I don't have what it takes to make her happy. And that is not true. I make her happy. She tells me all the time, but why don't I believe it? You know? So it's, it's like, why do I have this constant thought that I am not good enough? And I was praying about this. I'm like, God, why do I feel this way? Where did this come from? I was on my way to work, so then on my way home from work, God showed me. He gave me a revelation, and I had a friend growing up, and um, my mom was a babysitter, so he would come over all the time, and we would, I would spend, he was a couple years older than me, and um, he, I was by his side all the time. He was like an older brother. He was there since I was born, because my mom was watching him before I was born, and then I was born, and then I just grew up with him. He was like an older brother to me. I looked up to him so much. I was by his side. We rode bikes all through Elwood City. We would, like, jump on the trampoline. We'd go swimming. We, we would spend all summer and, like, most of the winter together until we went to, like, school and stuff. And, but we would spend the entire summers together. He was my best friend. But he got older because he, he was a couple years old. He started working with his dad. And he stopped coming. And he had a younger sister, too. And um, I remember, like, God rem showed me this, like, brought this back to my memory of when I was a child, I would sit out my window, because I always heard their van pull up. And I would sit out my window, and I would look, and I would see their van pull up, and I would pray, I would be so, like, I would hope that Adam would come out. His name is Adam. <laughs> and um, I would hope that he would get out of the van, but he never, he stopped coming. And in my heart of hearts, I was like, what did I do wrong? Why doesn't he want to come anymore? And, it, it, and like, as a, like a child, I didn't understand why he wasn't coming anymore. But like, now, it's like God brings this back to my remembrance, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, that was so silly, you know, that, you know, like, Adam just got a job, you know? He didn't do anything wrong. And if I were to see him, and I have seen him, he talks to me. Like, he doesn't hate me. He doesn't think I'm not good enough. And it's like, how did I get that in my head? You know? And it's like, that's what the enemy does. He takes little things like that, and he plants that little seed saying, oh, he doesn't want to hang out with you anymore because he doesn't like you because you're not good enough. And then I nurtured that through my whole entire life, all through high school, all through my, most of my, like, 20s. I'm 26 now, almost 27. And it's like, now I'm just realizing where this is all coming from. But you know what? I never had the thought to like ask, like, God, where does this come from? And it's like, I asked him and he showed me, you know? And I feel like I'm, I'm like cleaning out my room right now because I'm in the process of getting married and like moving out eventually and I'm cleaning out things so I don't have a ton of stuff to move. And I feel like God's doing that in my heart too. And like, we're going into the basement and it's like the dark basement, like I don't remember what's down there. We're going sorting through all of the hurts and all of the, the pain, the things that I pushed down that I never want to deal with again. I just like didn't want to deal with that at the time. And like Jesus is like, let's go down there and let's deal with these things. Let's get rid of them. Let's clean out. Let's keep what we need to keep and let's get rid of what we need to get rid of. So we need to make sure that we're doing that in our hearts constantly, that we are constantly derooting we're planting and we're growing. So I, I brought to you the, the basic, you know, we are the soil and the word is the seed. You know, what scriptures are we applying to us to plant in us? You know, God says a lot of good things about us. You know, he has a lot of good things to say about us. Are we planting those things, our identity? You know, are we planting that, that we are children? You know, we're, we're, we are children, that we belong to him. That, that's, that's an important thing to know, that you can go to God with any problem. You, you can. And I feel like a lot of us, we act like we're foster children with God. You know, that if we make a mistake, He's going to reject us. That we don't act like we're actually adopted. You know, that no matter what happens, we're still identified with Him. And that we're still His children. Does that make sense?
Does that resonate? I hope that resonates. I hope you leave today thinking like, I am a part of this family and there's nothing I can do to, to, for God to disown me. I can't do anything. Like, he will always take me back. So, good seeds. You know, I, I think of the fruits of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You know, we, I, you think back to, like, children's church, and it's like, oh, fruits, like, peace is a banana. Like, it's not that at all. Like, they didn't pl- intend on that just being a children's message. You know, these are good things. When you see these things coming from you, that means you're planting good seed. Like, God's spirit combines with our spirit, and it produces good fruit. That's how it's supposed to be. When we get saved and we become one with Christ, you know, we should be, we, we have an abundance of love. We have an abundance of joy. We have abundance of peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control is the one I have a hard time. I say a lot of things, and I'm like, why did I say that? I need more self-control. You know, we have things that we struggle with, but, like, are we producing these fruits? Are we planting these seeds for these fruits? So think about that. But um, I also want to take this analogy a step further. That the church is the soil and we're the seed. God plants us in this church. So everyone in this room and everyone online, you know, everyone watching this, you know, we are planted in the church and we are supposed to grow. So are we growing? Are we growing in our relationship with Christ? It doesn't matter how old we are, we should always be growing. We don't know everything. We don't know, we, we, we don't know, we need to compromise. Maybe we need to, to um, be more calm. Maybe we need to be more accepting. Maybe we need to be, uh, who knows? We should always be growing. Just in our, like I, I look at the Haney family. You know, they've been sitting here and they've been like coming faithfully and now most of them are on the worship team. Sam is making video and editing and putting them on Facebook. So now our reach is like further and people are being blessed by our messages on Facebook. You know, like they're growing. We're growing, you know. Like we're having couples getting married and having kids. Couples getting married, you know, like we're growing. There's people growing here and that's awesome. You know, and, the, and that's, that's what we want. We want the church to grow. But if you aren't a seed, you are a weed. And weeds, what do they do? They get in the way. You have to, you're keeping, you're holding it, they're holding it back from other people growing. So you have to do some introspection and you have to think about, okay, am I growing? Because if you're not growing, then you're just warming up a pew that someone else could be sitting in. You know, you're, you're getting in the way of other people trying to grow and you're just taking up the room and we're not able to grow. So you have to think, like, am I growing? Am I de-rooting? We have to constantly be de-rooting, planting, and growing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good. So, let me see. I think I said it all. We don't want to mow it over. Constantly keep digging. You can't just weed whack and mow over, right? You must dig down, de-root. Yeah, right? Okay. Find healing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, James 1, 21. <laughs> You don't have to turn there either, but if you want, that's great. This is a good highlight, you know, just highlight it. I like blue and green. Those are my favorite highlight colors. Um, James 1.21 says, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. Would you mind coming up? I'll read that again. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. <laughs> and um, it's hard to get rid of the filth in our lives. It's hard to get rid of you know, the, all the hurts and it's hard to get those deeply rooted seeds in our hearts out. You know, things that have been growing for maybe 20 to 40 years. Things that we've been nurturing. It, may, it might be hard. To get rid of that, but we got to get rid of it, you know. And in in like farming and gardening, it's not easy. It's hard. I remember one summer I had to rake gravel. Well, I didn't have to. Richard Oliver had me rake his yard. He had gravel all around, and like that was hard work. We had to get rakes and rake the gravel so that he can put different mulch down to 
do some planting, but you can't do it with a bunch of rocks in there. So, like, that was hard work. And that's exactly, like, Jesus doesn't, being a Christian doesn't always make it easier. It just makes it possible. You know, Jesus makes this possible. And he's there every step of the way. He's willing to go down in that basement with you and sort through all the dirty things down there and all the hard things to deal with and all the pain and all the, the suffering that you've been through that you've pushed down and hope you never see again. But you have to deal with it. You know, you can't just ignore it. You can't keep pushing it down anymore. It's time to take Jesus, take his word, let's plant some seeds, let's, de let's do some de-rooting. Let's clean, let's clean house. Let's clean house in our hearts. Let's, let's get rid of the, the evil and the filth in us so that we can grow and that we can, um, that we can produce good fruit. Does that make sense? You guys with me? I'm, I'm doing this with you. Like We're going to do this as a church. But I hope that this helps you. I hope that you walk away. Um, feeling encouraged and like thinking about this that you know like what are some what are what kind of fruit am I producing you know what what can I do like how and it's like you just have to ask God and he'll show you what to do he'll show you the, the steps to take to get healed it's gonna take it's probably gonna take some time it's probably gonna take some effort maybe he's counseling there's nothing wrong with counseling not at all it, it's good you know I mean maybe you have to take some steps to getting better again, you know, but do whatever it takes, but you know what, you're never alone, you have a body here to help you and support you, but ultimately, you have Jesus Christ, so I'm just going to pray for you guys, and you guys will be dismissed, if you need prayer for anything, come on up here, and we'll pray for you, but um, thank you guys for coming and listening, and I hope that this helps you. I hope this is a tool for you and a resource and encourages you to, to look deep inside and to deal with these, these hurts. So, dearly Father, we just thank you. And I just pray, God, I, I declare a blessing over this church, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will just... I pray, Father, that you will just show value and worth and love. God, I pray, Lord, we will not be able to grow if we don't know who we are. And like this scripture says... God's planted in our hearts good seeds. And we need to humbly accept them. And I'm, it's, sometimes it, it's hard to accept that I am holy and righteous. You know, it's hard to accept that I am loved and valued and I'm highly favored. That's hard. And we have to be humble and accept that. We need to just accept the fact that Jesus died on the cross and he, he saved us from our sins. Help us to accept that, that we are children of God, and that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can separate us from Him. And to think otherwise is being too proud, that we need to humbly accept our identity, we need to humbly accept who we are, which is loved and valued. And Lord, we praise you, and we worship you, and I pray, God, that they have a good week, we pray that we um, think about this and that we grow from this and that we learn from this, that we don't walk away the same. It's time for this church to grow. It's time for us to do good things. It's time for us to produce good fruit. The time is now. Your favor is upon us. We're in the time of the Lord's favor. Lord, we have been set free and we thank you for that. Thank you so much for casting off our oppression, opening our blind eyes, and um, saving us from ourselves, God. We just praise you and we thank you and, and in Jesus' precious name, amen.